What's up YouTube friends? Welcome back to my painting channel. My name is Stoof and I'm sure by now you have started watching this series of videos where I walk you through my painting process from start to finish. Well, we have made it to the finish line here. This is part five, the final step in my painting process, which is just to add a another round of detail to the entire painting. So we started out with just sketching out the concept for the painting. Then we started filling in with a base layer of color all around the whole canvas. Next, we started to add some detail to the background of the painting. Then we did some detail in the foreground of the painting. And the painting looked close to done at that point, but I still had a good four or five hours left of painting in this final step, which is just to add some detail across the whole piece and just make sure everything looks as detailed as I would like it to look. So what I'm doing here is adding another round of highlights and shadows into the trees. I kind of just make my way around the whole painting. I seems like I kind of work more in the background and make my way to the foreground again, but I kind of jump around. So <laughs> I wouldn't want to tell you guys that and then not do it. I kind of just jump around it seems like. So I'll look at a spot, I'll see what colors I have on my palette, and then I'll be like, okay, I have this color already mixed. I'm gonna work on this spot where I see I need some more of that color in the painting. Another thing I like to really do in my final step of wrapping up a painting is to really boost the contrast uh, further than I already have. So I'll make my darkers a little dark in the foreground and I'll make my highlights even brighter, add a brighter highlight on top of highlights, just to make things like really come to life when you're looking at them. I noticed that this area on the right side of the painting didn't quite have as much detail as the left side and that is because the right side is a little farther back that tree line is farther back than the trees on the left side of the painting those trees are a little closer to us but I want to have a consistent amount of detail across the whole painting I don't want to have lots and lots of tiny detail in this one section and then have like a big gap on one side of the painting uh, I could do that if I really wanted to draw the viewer into a specific part of the painting, I would add more detail to that part. Uh, for example, when I do pet portraits, I'll often make the dog's eyes and nose more detailed than the fur on their chest, just to like pull your eye right into that dog's eye when you're looking at a pet portrait. But in a landscape, I kind of like everything to be balanced out with detail. I want everything to have the same amount of detail so it looks more realistic. Not like you're looking through um, a filter where everything's blurry on the outsides, but as if you're looking at it in real life. As I mentioned before, working on boosting that contrast. Here I'm boosting the contrast on Tiger's shirt. I'm working on getting his skin tone a little bit more accurate, a little more saturated. I had it a little dull. Also trying to capture the highlights where the light is hitting the top of his arm and his hand. Then I'm taking my fine liner brush and working on the glove and the golf club in his hand. Add those highlights there. And that's really all there is to it. I just keep working on these smaller little features throughout the painting until I feel that it has reached the level of detail that I'm looking for, uh, where I can call it a completed painting. And you've probably also noticed that I use my liner brush for most of this step. And that is true. I use my fine liner brush. This is a 24 inch by 30 inch painting. And that liner brush is very small. <laughs> So thanks for hanging out with me while I walk you through my painting process from start to finish. 
here we're wrapping up the painting. I'm going to show you some footage of the completed painting soon, and then uh, I have one more video for you in this series where I'm just going to have a nice, very quick time lapse that condenses my many hours of working on this painting into under five minutes. So that one is a good one to catch too if you want to just get like the whole painting process without any uh, explanation and just seeing what I did in five minutes. It's coming up next time. So join me for that. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. And thanks for joining me. Bye bye.